Well, good morning. It is morning. Hey, look, if you hear a little NPR droning in the background, well, you know what I'm saying. They listen to NPR here. I don't. Shh, shh, shh. But I read, and this place got a lot of books. I didn't get this book from this place. I got this from, you know, whatever. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you this morning. It's important to me. Let's see. I'm up here now. I'm on page, uh, I'm actually at page 80, 87, but uh, what I want to read to you is actually on page 83. You say, but brother, you don't have had this book for, what, 10 days or something like that? You should be finished with it by now because actually the book, let me see, oh, they got, they got all their, look, they got notes. They all well, got index, they got notes, 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 notes. They got the appendix, wow, right? They got acknowledgments, and I guess the book is like right there. So we got this much stuff. Did you? I read a book one time, uh, Laurie Garrett's *The Coming Plague*. Man, the book was like, I mean, the actual thing was like, you know, whatever. But then the notes and everything like that, and the rip of all that stuff was like a third of the book. Those are the kind of books I like. But you know, see, there's all kinds of books. Let me show you. Let me tell you. Like, for instance, okay, look. But before I get to reading this to you, what page was I on? I'm on this page, but I'm reading to you from this page over here. Okay. It's going to be a while, so, you know, you can go do something else, whatever. I've got to tell you a little story. Oh, I, 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 made my, 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 I made a mix this morning, juice this morning. Well, I, I put the rest of the carrot, ginger, turmeric, right? That little bit of juice in there. And what did I have? Oh, gosh. I had the, I had the, the frozen mango chunks, right? But I didn't. I put that in, I put that in the in a blender before I go out, you know, because I go out for like I'll be out for like two hours, you know, my little morning morning to do with the doggy. Um, but uh, but I had I, I, I cut you know, chopped up the apple apple in here. What else is in here? Um, black uh, black cherry juice, pure pure black cherry juice. Uh, of course, I got my two. Oh, you know what I actually put in here? I put the chocolate. Um, the chocolate, uh, what's those seeds? The seeds, the seeds there. I put that in here, right? Wow. Uh, chia seeds. I love chia seeds. Chocolate chia seeds. Well, not the chia seeds, not chocolate. They got chocolate. You know what I'm saying. So I put that in there. I put some nutmeg in here, a little bit of honey that was left. Look, if I don't survive this, <laughs> look, if I don't survive this, make sure, <laughs> make sure you buy this book. It'll change your life. I'm just saying, you know. Okay. Kiwi fruit. Hmm. Oh, I forgot the pineapple. I should have put pineapple. Oh, I can actually still put pineapple because I got left. I can put whatever I wanted to. I'll see what happens. Okay, enough of that. Oh, yeah, let me tell you. So, let me tell you. Here's the thing. Writing. Okay, like, I'm an audio dramatist. Let me take this off. I'm actually an audio dramatist, right? Now, what audio drama, audio drama, audio drama actually means, it's like, when I teach audio dramas like this, I, I teach it with, with, with what we call um, the objective point of view, right? When I say objective point of view, you have to, first you have to do is write a script, okay? But you write it without a narrator. That's the objective point of view. So if you can write the script without a narrator, the objective point of view, then basically you're writing a play. You know, so you're a playwright. Your audio drama is a playwright, right? And of course, if you're writing a play, then you know, add a few stuff, whatever have you. Then you know, you also have a film script. So you're a screenwriter, right? Now, what is a uh, a modern novelist? When I say modern, I mean just a regular. I don't want to say a hack novelist, but a regular like novelist. All they do is they have these you know, these dialogues. That's what we we've been writing, right? With long descriptive passages, right? That's a modern novel, right? I'm not talking about your Faulkners or, or your Henry Dumas. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, then, so, so that's, that's, that takes care of that. So you, 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 you can be, a, you can be a, from, from learning how to be an audio dramatist, you can also be uh, one of those things that I said, you know, playwright, novelist, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, and of course, no, we leave, we leave the poetry out of it. You can be a poet. Well, poetry is not as easy as you think, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, now, okay, so you have that. Now, when you do something like, uh, when you do like um, academic studies, right? Now, that's something else. There's a certain language you got to use. 
uh, you'll find a lot of academic books they they repeating themselves boom 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 so consequently well they're repeating themselves right um, and there's, they, they really don't do uh, anecdot anecdotal anecdotal anecdotes you know like, like people for real like say hey somebody said this or whatever have you, you know I mean, if you do say that then you gotta you know you gotta back it up whatever so it's like it's mostly snap you have to deal with a theory you know what I mean and then you got to prove the theory or disprove the theory or whatever it is. And there's little spaces that you can jump into and, and have your whole dissertation on that whole thing, right? Okay. Then you have this thing, anecdotal information. Like like somebody says, there's this story, hey, I heard that so-and-so did so-and-so, right? That's, you know, or, or you know, uh, man, that whole that whole uh, breathe thing you've been talking about, man, I, you know, I knew a guy that when he breathed, he breathed out of his... He breathed out, not only did he breathe out of his, his nose, he also breathed out of his mouth. And guess what? He breathed out of his ears. It's unbelievable. You see, that kind of thing. And then you got to, you know what I'm saying? What's interesting about this book, it's got the, the, that kind of anecdotal situation. But what they do is they they sort of, um, he, has, he has to dig into facts, you know what I mean? To data and whatever have you. And so he, and then, 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 but the way he puts it, the way he does it, the, he being James Nestor guy, the way he does it, it's like, you know, you, you can follow it nice and easy. It's like, really? Hey, this is not difficult. This is not academic kind of thing, right? And, you know, okay, some of the facts, I, I can ignore that, but I, I, I sort of like this rhythm. That's what we're doing right here. That's what this right here. Anyway, that's, I think that's what we're doing. So we're going to deal with the thing I'll call it the prayer section. I call it the prayer section. It's prayer. Um, let me see if I can say I don't want to read yes I do in 2001 researchers just a second in 2001 researchers where is this where is that thing at where did I just have it at 2001 researchers at the University of Piva Pava Pava in Italy Pava no I was at Prada okay Pava Pavia Pavia it must be Pavia because it's Italian in Italy, gathered two dozen subjects, covered them with sensors, and measured blood flow, heart rate, and nervous system feedback. Nervous system feedback. Wow. Um, then, uh, uh, then had them recite a Buddhist mantra, as well as the original Latin version of the of the Rosary, the Catholic prayer cycle of the Ave Maria. Okay, which is repeated half uh, by a priest and half by a congregation. You know, that's the call and response. Let me tell you something what the Catholics did. <laughs> they took the African stuff, mainly the voodoo and stuff, right? And they did the call and response. That's the call, that's African call and response. Uh, they were stunned to find that the average number of breaths uh, for, for each cycle was almost exactly identical. Just a bit quicker than the pace of the Hindu uh, Thawis, yeah, Thawis, and Native American prayers. 5.5 breaths a minute. Interesting, don't you think? All those religious things have the same kind of, you know, breast criminal. Okay, here we go. But what was even more stunning, right, was that breathing like this did, uh, is, is what breathing like this did to the subjects, right? Whenever they follow this slow breathing pattern, blood flow to the brain increased and the systems in the body entered a state of coherence. When the functions of heart calculation, um, heart, sorry about that, excuse me, heart circulation and nervous system are coordinated to a peak, uh, to a peak efficiency. Right? The, uh, the moment the subject returned to spontaneous breathing or, th or talking, the, their hearts would beat a little more erratically and the integration of those systems would slowly fall apart. Focus, focus, focus. Sorry. Didn't say that. I just put that in there myself. A few more slow and relaxed breaths, and it would return again. Hey! It'd be chilled again. Okay. A decade after, a decade after the uh, Pava, whatever it is, yeah, Pavia, uh, test, two renowned professors and doctors in New York, Patricia um, uh, Gerbag, Gerbag and Richard Brown, used the same breathing pattern on patients with anxiety and depression. Hey, you hear that? Breathing pain, anxiety and depression. Now, who, who, who ain't got no anxiety and depression? 
Who raise your hand if you don't have any anxiety and depression? Um, mine is the praying. Oh, that's interesting. Some of these patients had trouble breathing slowly, so Garbarg and Brown recommended they start with an easier rhythm of three second three second inhales with at least the same length exhale. Okay. As the patients got more comfortable, they breathe in and breathe out longer. Okay, that's where we get to the part that I wanted to read to you. It turned out that the most efficient breathing rhythm occurred when both the length of respirations and the total breaths per minute were locked into a into a symmetry. 5.5 seconds inhales followed by 5.5 seconds exhales. Right? You got that? Interesting. Which works out to almost exactly 5.5 breaths per minute. This was the same pattern of the Catholic Rosary. I say Catholic, they don't say Catholic, they say Rosary. The results were profound. Even when practiced for just 5 to 10 minutes a day, 5 to 10 minutes a day, you could do that in your sleep. I'm not in your sleep. You can do that when you wake up in the morning. You can do that when you're anxiety filled in the middle of the day. You can do that at the end of the day. 5 to 10 minutes per day, right? I have seen patients transformed. I have seen patients transformed by adopting regular breathing practices, said, said Brown. He and Garbarg. Uh, even use this slow breathing technique to restore the lungs of nine eleven survivors who suffered from a, a chronic and painful cough caused by the debris. Let me tell you about that. I was I was nine nine eleven. I was actually down in that area. I was working for Democracy Now, and I heard the second plane hit. You know what I mean? I didn't think it was. I mean, I heard a rumbling. In that. Anyway, the point is, I was there, and that dust was something. And they kept on saying it was always right, but they would they would come down with those those um those wetting machines that that wet down the streets, whatever. They come like two, three times a day wetting that stuff down because, I mean, it was amazing. It was um, oh, because I was still I was doing still doing normal radio at at, at um. At, at 120 Wall Street, where BAI was, but I was at the same time as the Democracy South because we got kicked out the station, long story. And we was in the fire garret down there, you know, at downtown community television. Anyway, so, uh, but the thing is, it was, I mean, it, look, it did look like a movie set. I mean, at night, because I had to go there at night because no more radio is in the middle of the night. Anyway, uh, well, early morning. And, you know, the, the lights and everything like that, it looked, it was amazing. Anyway, nine one. So I knew that dusk or whatever have you. I, would, I didn't hang out there for a while. I didn't have no mask, but I didn't hang out there for, for a while. I mean, you know, I didn't really go to the site. I mean, I went, did my business and left, you know, that whole thing. Boom. In fact, I, I, I walked to the site like a month later. I did a poem when I did that. Maybe I should find that poem. I did a poem about 9-11 a month later. And I walked around that area. But it was amazing. It was unbelievable. Uh, survivors who suffer a chronic and painful core, cough caused by the debris, a horrendous condition called ground glass lungs. Ground glass lungs. That's what it's called. There were no known cure for this ailment, and, uh, and, just, and, and yet after just two months, patients achieved a significant improvement by simply learning to, uh, to practice a few rounds of slow breathing a day. Hey, that's the ultimate laboratory when you have some emergency and then you've got to deal with it. That's interesting. Uh, Garbarg and Brown would write books and publish several scientific blah, 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 blah. In many ways, this resonant breathing offered the same benefits as meditation for people who didn't want to meditate. Who you don't want to meditate? Well, I actually meditate more, but that's neat to hear that. Uh, what was that? Uh, uh, do, do, do want to meditate. Or yoga for people who don't like to get off the couch. I'll get off the couch, but I don't like yoga. I'll tell you that right now. I don't do yoga. I don't like the yoga culture. Da, da, da. The most I will do, no, I will, I will, I will do a, a, what's it called? A mini, a mini the, the dog stretch, you know, when I'm doing my prayer in the morning. But that's it. I don't do no yoga. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway. 
it offered the healing touch of prayer for people who weren't religious. I'm not religious. I'm so yeah, I know that everybody says I'm not religious or spiritual, blah blah blah, but that's true in my case. It did uh, did it matter if we breathed at a rate of six or seven or five seconds or were a half second off? It did not as long as the breaths as long as the breaths uh, were in the range of five point five. Let me read that for you again, because I gotta understand it myself. Did it matter if we breathed at a rate of six or five seconds or were a half second off? It did not, as long as breaths were in the range of 5.5. See, between five and six. We've got a large range there. We believe that the rosary may have partly evolved because it's synchronized with the inherent cardiovascular rhythms says mayor here uh, and thus gave a feeling of well-being and perhaps an increased responsiveness to the religious passage i wonder if that includes those worry beads that the that the, that the islamics have uh, um, the prava researchers wrote in other words the meditations ava maria's and then dozens of other prayers that have been developed over the past several thousand years we're all baseless. I think, oh, we're, years weren't, oh, sorry. You guys didn't base, I thought base, no, no. Let me read that again. I messed up. Just forgive me. Let me breathe. Let me calm down, breathe. All right. Through the nose. You get that five point, you know, five seconds. Okay. In other words, the meditations Ave Maria's and dozens of other prayers that had been developed over the past several thousand years weren't all baseless. Prayer heals, especially when it's practiced at 5.5 breaths a minute. I rest, or they rest this, somebody, I rest my case. Hey, Nala, the dog is here. Always, always trying to get in on the act. That dog just like to be around people, so I don't know what it is. I don't know why we spend so much time in the morning. Anyway. Look, check the book out. That's all I'm trying to say. I don't know if it's going to change your life. I don't know what it's going to do for you. But you know, you have the 9, one, the 9 11 people. You got the prayer people. All these people against you who don't want to do, you know, the people that don't want to do yoga. The people, the people, All them people against you saying like, hey, I don't know if this thing works or not. Okay. To just I'm just letting you know me, you know, me and oh, that's a uh, that's QJ over there. He's always over my shoulder because you know he's got my he's my wingman. You know what I mean? That's my grand nephew like that. And of course I'm wearing my my wife's hat because I got to keep my wife's presence on me. You know what I mean? Because she's because I'm stuck here. She's in South Africa. Yeah, you know, so I got to have some always to think about her like that. Okay, that's it for me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. From a basement location. <laughs>